Well, you know, we've been studying uh, the fruit of the Spirit for about, I don't know, what, two months, three months now? I, I'm, I've lost I've lost t- track of time. But uh, we're going to go back to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to start off with verse 23. Galatians 5, verse, verse 23. But, um, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith was last week. And this week will be meekness, meekness. I mean, I was studying this thing, and uh, it's like, man, there's about four parts to this, and uh, it's like, there's no way I can I can get this done in an hour or whatever, because this this is a broad, broad subject. Um, but uh, we're dealing with the fruit of the spirit. It it it. Like I've been saying, it's, it's supernatural fruit. This fruit that we've been dealing with the last three months, the fruit of the Spirit, it, it comes totally from God, totally from the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ. And really what it's meaning, all these fruits that, that we're dealing with, it, it, it means Christ. Okay? It's the fruit of Jesus. And so we're gonna, we've been dealing with the fruit of Jesus, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, you know, all that that's going on with the fruit of the Spirit. But today, meekness, we're going to deal with meekness. And I, I'm going to tell you something right now. Well, let me, let me, let me get, let me go before we go into that, let's, let me, I always bring out something uh, with fruit. So we understand, you know, to understand the grasp. I, I love to teach, okay? That's what I'm all about. And so we're going to deal with, before we go into the, 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 the fruit of meekness, let's go into, um, the supernatural fruit of, 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 of um, well, let's take, take a look at Matthew 21, verse 18. Matthew 21, huh, um, verse 18. And he says, and now in the morning he, will, he returned into the city. This is Jesus. He hungered. Jesus hungered. In verse 19, look what it says here. And when he, Jesus, saw the fig tree, in the way he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only. Look what it says here. And said unto it, Let no fruit grow on unto you henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. So as we said last time, this tree from far away, Jesus seen this tree, it had beautiful leaves. And as he got closer, and he already knew they didn't have no fruit on it, but as he got closer, that tree didn't didn't bear any fruit. So as I said last time, that meant symbolically of Israel rejecting Christ. But it can also mean, and I want you to get this, that fruit that fruit tree that that uh, that uh, fig tree had nothing but leaves on it. It was a parading tree. Remember when we talked about that? It was a showing tree, showing. It, it had, it looked like it had fruit, but as you got closer to it, there's no fruit. So that's what's going on today in the, in this Christian world. From far away, you know, you look. It looks like a Christian. It looks like a Christian. But as you get closer to this individual, there's no fruit. All this very show, I call it Christian Dior, Dior uh, name tag, plate Christian, only has a, 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 a symbol on, 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 on a little plaque on, the, on his chest that says, I'm a Christian, but there's no fruit. So you just as, this is something that, Jesus even cursed that tree because it wasn't bearing no fruit. And, and, and so this is, it was only show. There was, there, was nothing, there was no fruit to be seen. And we've been dealing with fruit for a long time. So I want you to understand that God is looking for his people to bear fruit. Now, as I said before, a fruit tree bears fruit, but it's for other people to eat. It's not for that tree. It's for that. It's, so, so as we're bearing fruit, I'm bearing fruit. I'm bearing fruit. So it's for the world. 
Jesus said, let your light shine. So your Father be glorified in heaven. It ain't nothing for you. It's nothing for you. You got nothing. Everything that I have today is because of Christ Jesus, because of the Holy Spirit. It's because of my God. I got nothing. I have nothing to boast about. Not even for a millisecond. Because what, what I got going on today is because of God through Jesus Christ. I got nothing to boast about. Only on my Jesus. Any type of fruit, any type of prosperity in, in my life is because of what Jesus done in my life by his Holy Spirit. That's the only, that's, that's the only thing, hands down. And so look at, look at Psalms 1. I'm going to look at this real quick, and then we'll go into this, into this uh, fruit of the Spirit, meekness. Psalms chapter 1, verse 3. Psalms, Psalms chapter 1, verse 3. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 1, verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth, forth his fruit. We've been dealing with fruit for three months now. You should understand that God is looking for fruit from his people. And that he brings forth his fruit in his season. See, there's a lot of times that we want to get ahead of God's season. We, well, Lord, what do you have for me? Lord, I, I, Lord you told me this, but, but, but there's a season in your walk. As, as, as we said before, when you plant a fruit tree, uh, it's, a little, it's a little tree, but it's not going to be bearing fruit for a little bit, right? But it's planted. You have to be planted in Christ in order for you for, to grow. But if you're planted into the world, you're going to start getting the worldview, and you're going, you ain't going to make it. That's the problem. Where are you planted at today? Number one. That brings forth his fruit in, in season, his... his his, his leaf shall also not also shall not wither. In other words, they won't, you will not die. You will not, you will, you're going to make it. You're going to be healthy as you're planted and you're bearing fruit. And but I but but this right here, whatsoever he he does, he do, doeth shall prosper. Now automatically we're looking at dollar signs. Oh, that could be. He 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 he, he blesses you financially but he also blesses you mentally. He also blesses me physically. He also blesses my children. He blesses my wife. And he blesses things that I, that, I, that I put my mind to it, and he opens the door for it to happen. Those, that's the prosperity I'm looking for. Oh, yeah, and he also blesses you monetarily. He takes care of me. I'm the first one that, that, to tell you that. He takes care of me. I, I lack for nothing. And so you have to understand that whatever, when, when you're planted like a tree by the rivers of water, that the rivers of water is, is, a, is, a, is a type of the Holy Spirit. I don't have time to stay with this. Is, this is a big teaching right here. It's a great teaching, right? I'd stay here an hour. But, 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 but see, that there's a lot going on here. We're talking about fruit. If somebody asks you, what's a Christian? What's this Christian supposed to do? They're supposed to bear fruit. In your life, that's 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 it. Okay, so I want you to understand that because we only have we have one more uh, temperance next week, I think, and we'll be done with the fruit of the spirit. But it, we've been, I've been, I've been, I've been kind of slowly um, teaching this. But as soon as you're saved, let me get you this: as soon as you accept Christ Jesus, Christ as your Lord and Savior, you begin to immediately produce fruit. You might not see it. You might not see it, you, but but pastor sees it. Your whole countenance, your 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 features change. That's the greatest thing. When I when I minister to people that are that don't know nothing about nothing about Jesus, and when they truly accept Christ Jesus, they don't understand. They're all mixed up. They're all confused. They don't they don't why? Because they come out from the from from this darkness of the dark, 
darkness of the darkness, and they come into this marvelous light, and, and, and they don't, they, it's, like a, it's like it's totally two different worlds. And say, so I get the privilege, I have the privilege to minister to people that, that, that don't know nothing about Jesus. And I get blessed. I learn. <coughs> okay, let's get going. <coughs> John 15, 5, and then we're going to get into our subject. John 15, 5, and you guys, you guys, I want you to get this. Because I've been, I've, been, I've been dealing with this, and I've dealt with this, and I've dealt with this. He says, I am the vine. You know what? We need to be hooked to the vine. We're the branches. We need to be hooked to that vine. Okay? We're the branches. We're the Christian. He's the vine, Jesus Christ. And he that abideth in, in me. In other words, that word abideth means remaining. We remain in him. We will re abide with him every day, 24-7, abide with him. Remain with him, not only just on a Sunday, but every day, mindful of him, praying, talking to him, in your car, at home, wherever you're at, at work. You abide in me, he says, and I'm in, in him, and the same bring forth, okay, much fruit. Fruit, more fruit, and much more fruit. For without me, we can do nothing. You can do nothing without. You better get that in your mind right there. Don't ever, get, don't ever lose this. For without me, you can do nothing. Jesus said that. Jesus said, you can't do nothing. You would say, well, I'm doing all right. I'm working. I got money. I got a house. I, he ain't talking about that. He's talking much higher things. He's talking spiritual things. Stop talking, thinking in the worldly, in the fleshly. Start thinking in the spiritual you hang around Harvest Time International long enough, you're going to be talking, you're going to be dealing in the spiritual because that's all I deal with through the Word of God. Some people can't handle it. they got to go. Got to go all somewhere. That's fine, but this is what we deal with here because you have to understand your, your spiritual walk. That's the first thing in this, in, this, in this world. You have to deal with the spiritual walk and everything else comes in play. Everything. Okay. Meekness. 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 When I when I put the word when I put that word meekness out, what does it come to what what, what comes to your mind? What's that? Humility. What else? Well let me let me let me put it this way. I'm gonna I'm gonna meekness is not a sign of weakness, first of all. It's not a sign of weakness because the world looks at you if you're meek and you don't stand up for your rights and you, and you're, and, and, and you, don't, you don't defend yourself because self, self always wants to defend him, himself. Self, self is always right there. Well, I'm going to defend myself. That's the, world, the way the world is. The world is if you're meek, you're, you're a pushover. I'll take advantage of pastor. Because he's, he's a meek man. He's humble. He, he, I, he, he's stupid because I can lie to him. He, he don't think I, and, he, and they, he, he don't know no better. Yeah, he don't, he don't know no better. I can, I, can, I can tell him this and he'll believe it. <laughs> so meekness is not a sign of being weak. Okay, we're going to deal with some stuff today. One of the distinctive features of a Christian is meekness. I, I, I tell you, you know, you can't have meek without, you can't be meek without having love. You can't, do, this just doesn't happen. You got to have love to, to have meekness. Okay? It, it, it goes together. <clears throat> it does not lift itself up in opposition. I want you to listen to me because I'm preaching to me first. If you don't think I'm learning something about this, you, you, I don't know, man, you're smoking something. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm learning. This could be, a, this could be a, 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 at least four weeks of training here, of, of teaching. 
because I have there's so much to learn. And I might go next week on this. I don't know. We'll see. It does not lift itself up in opposition. Meekness never lifts itself up with pride. Pride has no relationship to meekness. There's, there's, there's no relationship to that. It is not easily provoked. It doesn't pop off every time you say something and something you disagree with it. In other words, you ever see people, you, they're already in your face because they, they think they're right? They pop off. I'm talking about Christians. The world's all jacked up. I'm talking about Christians. You want to be right. It's the spirit, man. It's all over. First of all, I want you to get this. I'm going to say it a few times a day. You must divorce meekness from weakness. You must divorce meekness from weakness. We must have a meek spirit. I want you to listen to this. Because I teach my guys this, and, I, and, I, and, and I, I'm also going to teach this church this. Because my guys... My, the, my leaders, there's a, there's a way to witness. We must have a meek spirit when witnessing to outsiders or unbelievers. See, there's a way to be, you, you, you know, you can be right, but still be wrong. You, you, can, you can talk about Jesus, and it's right, but your spirit is wrong. Okay. That's why I teach my that's why I teach my ministers. That's why I teach my my, my leaders. And, and and I'm big at this. I, I'm I'm an evangelist at heart. I'm an evangelist, pastor, teacher, preacher. But I love to evangelize. I love people. I love to minister to people. I, I before when I was younger, I hated everybody. I didn't even want no one to get close to me unless I was drunk or high. I put walls up. Okay? But when God changed my heart and my life, he was slowly changing my image. He was changing my character. He was changing who I was. It doesn't change overnight. As I continue to surrender and say, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I didn't even know what that meant. But I still said it. Why? Because God knows that I didn't know what that meant. But as long as I'm saying it and praying it, he says, okay, I'm going to show you what that means. And he's still showing me. I'm still surrendering every day to him. I'm still saying, Lord, help me. I can't make it. That's the foundation to anything that God has for you. You've you got to say, Lord, I surrender myself to you. I surrender my mind, my, my lips, my tongue, my ears, my eyes, my hands, my body. Everything is yours. I, say, I surrender it all to you. And see, the, the, the Christian, Joe Christian, don't want to do that because we, got, we have so many things over here we don't want to let go. But all that stuff right there, it, you think that's going to help you, but it's going to destroy you spiritually. See, the church don't like to hear that. The church says, oh, you know, God will prosper you. and he'll, Yeah, he will. But there's some things that God's going to want. We're going to deal with some stuff here. There's some things that we're going to go, we have to go through to understand what this is all about. Okay. It'll probably be another week next week because I can, there's just a lot here. This is very important. Don't act like you have the final words. You hear me? Don't act like you, oh, I have the final words. I, it's my words and that's it. We all we all are still learning. You act like like you have like like you act like you have it. No one else has it. We're talking about meekness. We're talking about meekness. We're dealing with meekness. I'm talking to me first. Okay. 
And maybe the best way to understand meekness is through illustration. That's the way the Lord Jesus taught when he was upon planet Earth. He, he had examples. He had a little illustrations. So I'm going to show you a couple things here, and then, we'll, and then we'll deal with it. Numbers 12, 3. We're talking about meekness. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. We're, dealing, we're talking about meekness and Moses. He was a very meek, and he said, it says that he was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. So you had Moses was a meek person, but yet he was strong. He, he was a very strong man, but he was yet meek. Uh, there was an incident that happened that his sister got all over him, and he just kept his mouth shut. He was all, his sister was all over him. And, and, and he, didn't, he didn't do nothing back. And so God said, well, since, since, since you're not going to do it, I'll deal with it. So sometimes you've got to keep quiet and, and say, well, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to deal with it, Lord. You're going to have to deal with it. Well, let's, we'll keep going. Meekness. Job chapter 1, verse 20. Look at this. Job, good old Job. You, want it, you think you got it bad. You think you got some stuff. Job chapter 1, verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. 21. And said, Naked came I out of my mo mo mother's womb, and naked shall I return hither. The Lord gives, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In other words, he's saying, Lord blesses, and he also takes it away. Verse 22. And all this Job, and all this Job, and all this Job sin not, nor charge God foolishly. Now, Job, I'm going to real quick, real quick here. Satan afflicted sores all over his body, Job. And Job's wife told him to curse God and die. And Job knew if he, he said that, it would, it would, it would be foolish. It, you know, Job had lost everything he had. He was probably one of the richest guys in, in that at that time. Lost all his materials, lost everything. Even his friends, friends were saying, hey, you sinned. That's why you're, all these things are happening to you. Boy, how, how would you like to have friends like that? Instead of encouraging him, praying for him, uplifting him, they were condemning him. Why? Because what they seen. What was going on with Job's life. And if you know, you know the story. The, the devil went to God and asked and, and, and talked about Job in heaven. Now, first of all, Satan went to heaven and asked God, about Job. That's a whole that's a whole never that's a whole different teaching itself right there. So he went all that all through that hell he went through and all the all the all the all the things he went through. But the Bible said he didn't he never he never he, he never sinned against God, and he never, he never, he never um, um, rebuked or cursed God, even through all the conflict that he went through. It's a good study. Study at home. It's a big book. I don't have time to to, to, to explain that. But by the way, God restores everything to him at, at what what that what he had. He God even blessed him with more. Okay, he didn't lose anything. He's always, God's a blesser. That's why I, I, I tell people, and I tell people, and I tell people, God is not cheap. God pays well to his people, the people that are, that are, that are, that are living for him and, and, and living for him and say, Lord, I'm yours. He's going to take care of you. Um, and by the way, let's take a look real quick. Chapter 38.4. And look at this, and, I, and then we'll move on. This came to my mind this morning. 
He never cursed God and so forth, but he was a little bit frustrated. He was a little bit frustrated. But look what he told, look what he told Job. This is what you got to tell yourself. Look at yourself. He told Job, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? In other words, God's all-knowing. He said, Job, where were you when I, when, when, I, when I constructed this earth, when I constructed these stars, and when I constructed all these, this, this universe? Where were you, Job? And he's dealing with Job. But he's saying, you know what? I'm in charge of everything. Just like he's in charge of your life. Just like he knows everything that's going to happen in your life. He knew you were going to be sitting here today. He knew what you were going to be wearing. He knew what he, he knew. He knows it all. And so that's why we have to. That there's a word that that word trust comes to my mind. You have to totally trust him, and that's where the the flesh fights. The flesh wants to fight that. And you have to come to the time and place in your life and say, Lord, I'm going for broke. I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to what I see. I, I'm going to have to believe in what your word says, and I'm going to have to walk this out. Help me. Where are we at, Job? And I laid the foundations of this world. That's power. That's power. You know, any more, any more, you know, I just go to my I just go to my father for everything. I I, there's, there's, I can I can share I can share a testimony here that just happened this week, but I'll I'll wait because it's not time yet. It's big. But God just shows me time and time and time and time again that he's in charge of this ministry. And people walk in and say, man, this, 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 you know, we're a hospital for the hurting in this place. But sometimes it's emergency care. Sometimes I got to put the IV right up when you walk in. And they say, let's just going to be all right. That's the kind of, that's kind of, you know, we're, we're, a, we're a hospital for the hurting, but we're also emergency care. My, my, my daughter, she works for the emergency hospital. She said, Dad, my job is to keep them alive. That's it. And sometimes you, some of y'all walk in here, man, they're, you're half dead. I got to keep you alive. I got I to gotta feed you. I got to minister to you. I, I'm, I'm praying, Lord, touch them, heal them, change their life. And we're going to talk about this one here. Let's look at Jeremiah 26. Verse 12. I want to I want to deal with this one here. And I, I want you to listen to me here. Okay? Jeremiah 12. You know, Jeremiah 26, verse 12. Let's, let's, let's look at this. Let me pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people. Lord, help us to learn today. Help us to grow. Help us to walk out different. Holy Spirit, minister to hearts and minds and souls today, Father. You're the one. You're the one that can do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now look at this. We're talking about meekness. We're dealing with meekness. Then spoke Jeremiah unto all the princes and to all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against. Circle that little word against, against in your Bible if you want. Against this house, against this place, against this situation, and against this city, all the words that you have heard. In other words, he's going, this prophet's going in there. He ain't, he ain't talking about, hey, God's going to bless you. God's gonna, no, he's, he's talking, he's going he's gonna to deal with some stuff. Okay? Therefore, now amend your ways, he said, verse 13. Change your ways. He's going to tell you, you've got to change your ways. He's saying you've got to change your ways. You've got to live differently. 
He's not going in there to give you some sweet nothings. He's, telling, he's giving you something that God has told him to tell you because if you don't change your ways, there's going to be some problems. Okay? Therefore now amend your ways and your doings and obey the voice of the Lord your God and the Lord will, will repent him and the evil that he has pronounced against you. Fourteen, as for me, behold, I am your I am in your hand. Do with me as seems good and meet unto you. Now we're talking about first of all, I want to deal with verse verse twelve. There's going to be some times that you're going to have to raise up, you're going to have to stand up, and you're going to say, That's wrong. And in fact, you're going to be called a hater. Because of the word of God. You're going to, you're going to be called things that you might be cussed at, you might be laughed at, you might be, they're mad at you, they're cussing you out, they're, they're talking bad about you because you're standing up for righteousness, because you're standing up for the word of God. It's going to come to that. A true Christian has to speak up. You cannot be quiet. Because you're per, you'll be suppressing the truth. You'll just be bad as them. As Christians, brothers and sisters, as a church, we got to start rising up and be a prophet of the word. And when you're being taught and you, and you understand this and you're studying this out and God is showing you, you need to speak up. Not to be a part of that, but speak up in, in love and in meekness and tell the truth. You're going to have to. Because if you don't, you, God is not going to look at God. God is not, is not happy with, with, with people not, not sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. He, he laid down his life for you. People are hurting. People are lost. People, people, people don't know. They're confused. They're mad. They're upset even now. And you, and you, and you will suppress the the truth and not saying nothing. Well, I'm embarrassed. I don't, I don't, I can't say nothing. You better be praying for boldness. You better be asking God to change you, to have boldness to speak to people. And not to be mean, but be have boldness to speak to the individual, to say whatever that God's telling you to say in, in love and meekness and, 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 and with, with, with power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. How many of y'all are praying for the anointing of the Holy Spirit in your life? You need to have, it needs to happen. It, hey, that's something that you need even more now because I guarantee you, Satan has anointing too. So here he is in verse 12. He's, he's, he's going against, he's, he's prophesying against the house. He's prophesying against the city and, and the, and it, and, 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 and that, they, that, that's not good. The people's going to come against you when, you when you stand up for what's right. You're hanging around with people that don't even know Christ. First of all, I wouldn't be hanging around with people like that unless you have to work with them. And if you work with them, you better find a way to minister to them because that's where probably God, probably God put you there so you can minister to these people. It just doesn't happen. And in verse 13, it says, Amend your ways, your doings, and obey the voice of the Lord, your God, and the Lord, and the, and the Lord will repent him of the evil that he has pronounced against you. Now, 14, look at this. We're dealing with meekness. Verse 14. As for me, Jeremiah saying this, Behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as it seems good and meet unto you. In other words, whatever you do to me because I'm, I'm standing up for righteousness sake, go for it. He wasn't retaliating. He wasn't getting mad at them. He wasn't trying to defend himself. He wasn't trying to uh, that browbeat and everything else. No, he's saying, look. I send this message from God, and if you don't like it, fine. 
If you, if you do like it, fine, whatever. I'm going to do what God's call, telling me to do. But now, but say, he says, and if you, whatever you want to do to me, it's up to you. You might think that's crazy, but that's what's coming. It's coming. It's, it's coming. It's, it's, it's going to be soon. You're going to have to stand up for what's right, and it doesn't, you're going to have to have a mentality to say, you know what? It doesn't matter what you say and what you say. I'm still going to do what, I'm going to, what God's telling me to do. And when I do, understand and probably expect there's going to be people that don't like you for saying that. The greatest exhibition of our was was an example was our Lord Jesus Christ. Now let's let's take a look at this. We're, we're dealing with meekness, okay? Dealing with meekness. But before I go into that, Philippians two, I want to I want to share I want to share something with you. John chapter two. Verse verse uh, thirteen. John chapter two verse thirteen. Now, I want to show you something here that. We'll make you think a little bit. John chapter 2, verse 13. We're talking about meekness, and we're looking at Jesus. John chapter 2, verse 13. Look what it says here. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, verse 14, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting, and the, cha and the changers of money sitting. Verse 15. And when he, Jesus, had made a scourge of a small cords, he drew them all, them all out of the temple in the sheep and the, and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables. <clears throat> Verse 16, and said unto them, Who sold doves? Take these, take these things hence, and make not my father's house a house of merchandise. So Jesus just before he walked in there, just before he went to this, he came into Jerusalem with a little donkey, a lowly person, right on a donkey, right, going into Jerusalem. Minutes later, he goes to the temple. He sees people trying to make a buck on, on, on church stuff, selling stuff to try to make a buck uh, on, on the gospel. He turns the tables over, makes a cord, and he starts whipping these animals to get these animals out of the, out of the temple. It's all about meekness. So Jesus, Jesus was angry. Why? Because he seen what they were doing, and I don't have all, all this time to explain this, but, but they were trying to they were peddling the gospel, basically what they were doing. Okay? And then Matthew 21, 13, real quick. And it says, Jesus said, And my house shall not be called the well, should be called the house of prayer. Matthew 21, 13. But you made it the den of thieves. I could stay on this for a while here. But you have all these people going around thinking because you drive a Cadillac, God's blessing you. No, you, it might not just be that. It might, you, you might be just taking the people's money in some way, and, and, and uh, it's not, God has nothing to do with that. I know that's heavy. But when you start turning people's, turning the tables over with their money, and you start touching their money, there, there, there's, there's something going on. There's, there, there, you look at that, and you're going to get close to their heart. When you start messing with their money like Jesus did and turn those tables over and the money was all scattered out and, and Jesus dealt with that because it was wrong, Philippians 2, 5, 8. Let's talk about this real quick, and then we'll... Philippians 2, 5, 8. 
Oh, Philippians 2, 5, first of all. Philippians 2, 5. Um, the best example is Jesus Christ. That's the greatest exhibition of our of, of meekness. Look at this. Five. Let this mind be in you, which is also was also in Christ Jesus. In other words, I pray, Lord, Lord, I produce this mind of Christ in me. That's a good prayer. Because I can't produce it myself. This is something that only God can do. And see, God, God, God's the only one that can do this through the Spirit. Okay? Now let's go keep going. Kids are back. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Verse 7. But made himself of no reputation and took upon himself uh, the form of a servant. So what is, what is a minister? Is a we're servants. That's it. If you see a minister is not serving, then he's not a minister. He's his own minister. And was made like in the likeness of men, verse eight, and being formed and being found in the fashion of as a man, what did he do? He humbled himself, meekness, humbleness, meekness. He humbled himself. And became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Look at that. We're talking about meekness. I, that's a whole other study right there. I'm just giving you stuff that you can go home and study. Meekness. We seem to forget Jesus went to Jerusalem lowly. A few minutes later he got some belts, and he beat those birds out of the temple. He knocked over the money-changing tables. He opened up the doors, and he let the doves out. He threw them out uh, in the front doors. And then people wondering, who, who, is, who is this guy? I got two verses, and we're done. The promise to the meek. I got to say this. There's a promise to being meek. Chapter uh, Matthew 5 5. And I'm going to say this quick. There's a promise to us to be me to be me. Look at what it says here. Blessed or happy. Prosperous. Blessed. That's what that means. Happy are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So 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 there's a there's a there's a promise that we're going to inherit the whole earth. You don't even know what that means. You don't even know. You all looking going. You know. You don't even know what that means. You you don't even know what that means. But I don't know if God's saying I'm going to inherit this earth, my Lord. The little things He done for me on earth while I'm here now, it just blows my mind. But He's going to give us the earth for being me. See, God's not cheap. He pays well. I keep on telling you guys that. I keep on saying this and saying this. One of these days, you're going to get this. He's, he's a, he pays well. He's a good employer. He's a good God. Okay. Psalms 37, 11. I'm coming to a close. I'm, I'm done. Psalms 37, 11. The kids are back, so we gotta, I got to see how, how I've been hurrying up today. But we'll get it. Um, oh, the meek. But the meek shall inherit the earth. We talked about that. And shall delight themselves in the abundance of... The abundance, it's not, he's not stingy. The abundance of peace. I don't know about you all, man, but I take that to the bank. Because the enemy wants to steal my peace. The enemy wants to take my peace. He wants to steal. When I'm all excited, when God just opened up a door and, and done something great for me in this ministry, all of a sudden, Satan goes, well, we're going to see, we're going to see how, we're going, we're, going, we're going to see how happy you are. And so he throws another curveball. But I expect it. I know that. But see, you have to understand that there's a lot here. He's the one. God wants to give us the abundance of peace, man. I, oh, Lord. There's no room for depression. There's no room for anxiety. There's no room for suicide. 
There's no room for just walking around defeated. There's no room for that. He's saying, he's saying, I will give you. He says, I will give you this peace. He says that this is what he'll do. Amen. Praise God. I want you to understand meekness is, a, is not a sign of weakness. It's, it's a controlled strength. Jesus had all, all, all strength, all power, power, but he controlled it. Even unto the death of the cross, he laid down his life. He didn't fight. And there's so much. I'll probably deal with this next week more because there's so much more I want to deal with. I, didn't even, I just touched on this barely. We're going to have communion. But next week, it'll be part two. I can't, this, this is not, I'm not comfortable with this. There's so much more that I want to share that we need to understand meekness. I'm not going to move on until we get until until we until I feel at peace that we're getting this. So I be, next week we're going to there'll be a part two for this. Okay, Amen.